Hi, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Professor Silvia Tamale from Makerere University, who's with us for a week on the project Above the Parapet, where we're investigating the journeys of senior women in academic, political and diplomatic life, as well as civil society. Professor Silvia Tamale, you are a renowned academic and scholar, although you told me earlier this week that law wasn't where you were going to start your, your student life and your studies. You've remained there for many years, you've studied, you've written, you've been an activist too. Tell me what it is after decades of this work that pleases or challenges or drives you to stay in the academy? Um, I think the academy provides um, a great platform for political work. And for me, when I'm in the lecture room, I am doing political work you know, having the audience of the students to, to let them see the law within its context and, you know, both understand, you know, the law as a tool for oppressing people as well as um, a tool for liberation. So it's a double-edged sword and, and I, I want, I use that platform to really um, bring that across to the students. That's interesting. You've been uh, a scholar for your entire adult life. Yes. And um, you talk about the oppressive power of the law. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us why it is you've been content to be a scholar and a critic rather than a politician and a legislator? You know the old feminist slogan that the person is political? I think everything is political. The law is certainly political. and. Um, I, I don't see myself working outside politics because um, the law plays a very important role in um, fathering the interests of politicians, of the people that hold power. Mm. So, you know, when I'm critiquing the law, when I am, you know, using the law to either expose the oppressive and um, discriminatory aspects of it, or using it to liberate, I'm doing politics. So your, your teaching work and your academic work is about putting your politics into practice? Yes. Now, you've been at Makerere for quite some time now. You've taught many students, and you've risen to be the first dean of the law faculty there who's a woman. Mm -hmm. um, do your colleagues recognize and see that you're doing politics at the university? And if so, has it caused any problems? Well, I, I, I guess you'd have to ask them, but I think some of them recognize that what I'm doing is politics. Mm. And uh, some of them might be upset with what I do, mm -hmm. and others might appreciate it. Uh, but I'm really not doing it for my colleagues. I'm, not, I'm doing it for, for the betterment of our society. Mm -hmm. So. Um, but no, no, nobody has ever attacked me directly. In the wider university community, yes, I've been verbally and uh, through our internet listserv, uh, I've been attacked for my views, for my um, being vocal on issues that are, uh, are supposed to be taboo, like uh, talking about the rights of sexual minorities, talking about um, issues like abortion, yeah. and, and uh, I've been attacked, yes. All right, so let's just look at a couple of those. Within the law school, you've not faced, faced much explicit criticism. In fact, you were accepted as a dean. Yes, absolutely, yes. And so you, in, in a sense, you enjoyed the support of your immediate mm -hmm. colleagues. Outside the faculty, that's been a bit more complicated. Right. And beyond the university, it's been even more critical. Right. So let's just sit with that for a moment. You faced a lot of criticism in the media mm -hmm. to the point where they even called you the worst woman of the year in 2003. Yes, I was Can you voted. tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yes, in 2003, um, the New Vision, which is the, the, the biggest newspaper, the biggest daily in Uganda, uh, at the end of each year, it conducts a poll and it asks its readers to vote for different categories, you know, worst, worst politician, best politician. Worst. So for the category worst woman um, of the year, that year in 2003, I was voted um, the worst woman of the year. And do you know who my counterpart was? In other words, the worst man that no. year? 
It was Joseph Cohn, the notorious rebel who mutilates, mutilated and murdered thousands of people in northern Uganda. And um, for the readers, the reason why I was the worst woman that year was, again, because of my speaking out, my, you know, always talking about issues that were seen as against African tradition. Right. Um, again, you know, perceived as a sin, so against religion. And um, yeah, that's why I was voted. Was well, you know, I, I took it as a badge of honor. And I, I, I even made a button which says, Worst Woman 2003, and I wear it with a lot of pride. Well, perhaps you could send us a photo of you wearing that one day. <laughs> We'd like to do that. But I did look at that article where you came way ahead of the other women in terms of the Worst Women of the Year. And to contrast you with Joseph Coney is an absolutely astonishing thing to see in that paper. Um, and, your, and the reasons that were given, as you say, for attacking traditional Ugandan culture and practices, as opposed to killing thousands of people, which Joseph Coney has done. And the other women in that list, as we talked about yesterday, Sylvia, were women who had somehow or other transgressed the norms of female behavior, keeping quiet or being sexual or um, not before behaving as women are expected to do. Is that is that a fair thing to say? But even 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 um, <clears throat> that term, you know, transgressing African tradition. I think it, it needs to be unpacked. Um, the population invokes custom and tradition very very selectively, yeah. and many times it is misinterpreted. And, and, and conflated with religion, which is not traditional at all. I mean, I'm talking about, when I talk about religion here, I'm talking mm. about Christianity, Islam, which are not traditional, which are not cultural, yeah. okay? And, and so many times people just, you know, use the, the term, you know, you, that is against our tradition Absolutely. very, very selectively, especially when it comes to the rights of minorities like women, like, um, sexual minorities. Yeah. So I'm not even, so you know, it would take a, you know, the, the whole day for me to begin talking about what is African culture. Of course. You know, is of there course. an essence in, in that yeah. term, African culture? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. Well, all cultures and all traditions are dynamic and movable and are created. And we borrow from <coughs> each other and absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So in, I was about to ask you about who your main detractors were and how you dealt with them, but in a sense you've answered that. So let me ask you, who have been your major supporters in your trajectory, even though you've done things that have been publicly criticized, like supporting LGBT rights. Mm -hmm. And how did you find those supporters? Well, when I think and reflect upon my academic journey, I, I can think of several people that have really influenced and, and supported mm. my stance. Um, beginning with you know, back when I was a student, I there was in, in, in the law school there was a, a big rift between um, professors who leaned on the left and professors who were very you know liberal leaning and and um, the leftist professors used to teach us the law in its context, specifically its political economy, um, pol the political economy of the law, and uh, emphasizing the class interests within the law. And although those professors were not um, feminist in any sense, their analysis of the law sometimes alluded to, you know, even gender differences within the law. <laughs> so um, Professor Duke, I remember, was very influential in awakening my um, understanding of these issues. And he's been um, quite supportive in that sense. And then, you know, later my um, Joe Olokonyango, who became my husband, introduced me to a lot of literature, feminist literature, especially African American yep. literature, uh, feminist literature. My mother, who, although she she cannot be described as a feminist, she 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 was very assertive and very strong in ensuring that. Um, we got a very good education, and um, you know she, she 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 came across as a very strong figure in yes. my family. Yes. So it seems to me your mother's laid the foundation for yes, a absolutely. strong, independent 
thoughtful woman, but there were key men, it seems to me. How about yes. this, if I say this to you, there were key men who awakened your feminist consciousness. How does that sound? Is that fair? Yes, uh, you know, when I talk about Professor Yuko, when I talk about my husband, <clears throat> yeah, those are, uh, you know, men that have really influenced my academic life, mm -hmm. yeah. So let me just ask you to finish. This research um, and the findings from this project will be looked at by young, younger women who are seeking to establish and pursue a career in the four fields we're, we're investigating. Mm -hmm. One of those is academia. Mm -hmm. Um, for those young women or those who are at the start of their academic careers in Africa or elsewhere mm -hmm. who want to go on and be deans, heads of departments, possibly vice chancellors and principals, who are thinking about how they manage that journey, what advice would you give them? Oh, uh, number one, the world will try as much as possible to define who you are. Don't let the world define who you are define who you are yourself, to um, never ever shrink to fit the expectations of others. Um, that pressure will always be there, but try to, 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 to avoid it. Um, three, you, you have to be aware that um, in this journey, especially if you're a um, as an activist scholar, you will be hurt, you will be criticized, you know, mud will be slung at you. And it's okay to hurt and to, you know, lick your wounds, but mm. you must, you know, get up and um, take the bull by its horns and fight back. And finally, I would advise them to work very hard. This, you, you, you know, you, you cannot um, get any rewards without working for it. You, you know, nothing good comes easy. You, you mm. have to work very hard mm. and, um, you know, be in the know in your field. What are the theories? What are the debates? Um, you publish. And all that takes a lot of work. And of course, not to mention juggling your other roles in life. Absolutely. Professor Silva Tamale, activist, scholar, and inspiration to many in Africa and beyond. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Pleasure.